Hello, so we thought we'd talk about the drone today and show you some of the footage that we managed to get with the drone. So as you can tell, I'm uh, playing around with it and uh, I got to do different uh, scenarios. I went and I got some uh, field pictures, some structures, uh, just a whole uh, different you know, city. Uh, anyway, so hopefully you enjoy those. And the whole point is to show you how good the camera is. It's very, very easy to fly and just look at how simple it is uh, to hover and get some decent video footage. Now, of course, uh, let me get even closer, actually. So it's quite easy to, there we go. I'm not gonna like it because I'm a little too close, but the point is, it's quite simple. Um, I think it wants me to back up a bit. There we go. I think it's maybe too, too low. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So it's relatively simple to fly. You can let it hover there, and of course, um, you can you know track your subject. In this case, I don't actually have that turned on, but the point is, um, it's a real, real good tool to have in the field outside. Just go ahead and use like an audio, an external audio, because obviously the drone does not have any sound. For those of you who are not familiar with drones or thinking of buying one you will need some kind of audio source if you're going to get the surrounding sounds or if you're going to uh, you know, do any kind of videos. So there we go. Uh, again, the, the flying is really easy for amateurs. Um, once you figure out how to turn them on or you got to press and then press again and hold, a uh, little trick for you if you haven't tried one of these. Uh, I think the first time I spent like 10 minutes trying to figure out how to keep it turned on because they'd press on it, lights would turn on and nothing would happen. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the footage. So let's go ahead and take a look at what makes up this DJI Mini 3 Pro. Uh, well, first off, as you'll notice by the size of it, it's 249 grams, which is actually great because that means it doesn't require a special permit or license as opposed to larger drones. Um, I actually had a chance today to uh, have some uh, police officers uh, come and see me fly the drone and they were asking some questions and uh, uh, anyway, they, they specifically asked me how much the drone weighed and as soon as I told them it was 249 grams, uh, they pretty much told me I was fine and I got to uh, keep filming. So the other thing is the the real life uh, use, I guess I'm getting about 30 minutes. I mean, they're telling you that the standard battery is 34 minutes, but as soon as there's any kind of wind or any kind of resistance, I, I mean, I wouldn't use this in the rain because it's not waterproof, but the um, point is, is it's, yeah, you're going to get about half an hour. And if you're doing some short, uh, you know, filming for, for six minutes or you know 10 minutes or so at a time then what you're going to find is you're going to be doing roughly uh you know three maybe four different uh takeoff and landing and that'll be it so what's really nice is i wanted to contrast a little bit flying by day and these are some of the scenes that we have when we are flying in broad daylight. Of course, sometimes um, I found that it was very cloudy and of course, you know, it gives you a bit of a different look when it's cloudy versus full sun. And once you get to uh, evening, there's a whole different uh, look and feel to it. Of course, it's much greenier when it's dark. We all understand that the, uh, the ISOs at that point change and you, you will definitely get better resolutions in full light, um, I'm saying full light, but in, in brighter conditions. Uh, sometimes I find when there's too much sun, for example, if you were to film in a desert and so forth, you might actually get colors that are washed out as opposed to uh, when you get that twilight kind of light, which uh, might enhance certain colors or certain uh, aspects of your subject. Now the, the CMOS on there, the sensor, is um, is basically uh, one over 1.3 inch. So it is a dual native ISO and it supports direct output to HDR footage. The, the resolution, what's really nice is you're getting 4K HDR and when you get to the pictures, you can get 48 megapixel uh, raw photos if you want. And 
the frame rate is also very high in 4Ks. You can go up to 60. Of course, if you bring it down, if you really want a high uh, frame rate, you can go to you know 1080p, for example, then it will do 120 FPSs. So that makes a huge difference. But um, I think that the pictures are stunning. The colors are nice. Um, it's quite easy. There's three directional obstacle sensing. So even for such a small drone, it is very simple to navigate. It will sense, I mean, I find it a bit annoying because it does beep. I tend to uh, fly it around at lower, you know, closer to the ground. And of course, if I'm filming myself, for example, it does tend to beep quite a lot because it's detecting that you've got the ground underneath it. You've got objects in front of it and so forth, but it is quite easy to navigate. Uh, as in any drone, it's always great and definitely recommended and might even have a legal requirement in some areas that you keep a line of sight. It is useful, uh, especially if you're in areas or terrain that you're not used to and you can't spot yourself. <laughs> Sometimes it becomes awkward or difficult to, you know, sort of guide your way back to where you were uh, manually. You're kind of staring down saying, okay, where am I? And you're a little ant somewhere off in the distance. So it, it can make for interesting situations in those cases. Sometimes you just want footage and you just can't figure out where the drone went because it is small and you look up and if you go a little too high, then it becomes a problem. Now keep in mind that you can, uh, you know, still see the video. I mean, they're telling you that you should be able to uh, get the live feeds up to 12 kilometers away. Um, again, I mean, that is quite a distance. I don't think that I would want to fly that far. Uh, just, I, I'd like to keep it line of sight or else it's, uh, it becomes kind of very awkward to fly. I find I really like to have my eyes on it to visually see if there's anything there. Uh, I know it has auto detection and obstacle avoidance and so forth. Um, I look, I'm, a, I'm pretty much an amateur of this, so I don't want to run into things. Uh, I mean, for safety reasons alone, obviously that's the best way to do it. But, um, point is, is I do like to be able to see if there are obstacles, not just let the drone do it or, or even going through the lens of the drone, but visually see it remotely to make sure that I'm seeing it's not going to hit a power line or something like that. The other nice feature about it, in case anyone's interested, is what they call true vertical shooting. And so it's the equivalent of having, I guess, an iPhone image. So if you're doing TikToks or, or things that you'd prefer having in a vertical shoot, uh, this will do it. So basically what happens is the gimbal will rotate 90 degrees. So it's a nice feature. Again, it's, it's quite uh, easy. And they have, I mean, they've got a bunch of different uh, features to this. Um, you know, they have things called master shots and they've got focus track. Uh, they have something called hyperlapse and they have digital zoom on there as well. Now, from a picture point of view, you could do wide angles. You can do like panoramics basically. And those are, are interesting and it adds uh, quite a bit of, of, you know, stretches out the picture basically left to right. Um, the transfers are simple. I mean, you can either do it through back through your phone, for example, or, um, in my case, I just take the chip out and shove it in the computer. I think it's real easy to do. And of course, when you purchase these, you can go and get additional batteries. You can get little, uh, recharging, uh, I don't know how they call it, but they've got a little, uh, kind of a docking station, if I can call it that, or a little, uh, charger that will hold up to three batteries. So that's one way to do it. And of course, if you want to extend it, they have um, something called, uh, it's basically a battery plus is how they refer to it. And the, keep in mind though, it, it will add some flight time. However, it does bring your weight above the legal, you know, the minimum requirement or the maximum requirement, I guess it is for weight. So keep that in mind. I personally prefer to keep it under and this way I have no surprises. And by the way, it does specifically say 249 grams on the back of the battery. So if anyone wants to visually confirm that that is the weight of the drone, like, you know, like I said, if a police officer comes up to you and demands to know how much it weighs, well, it's written right there. It certainly can make things easier. So, and the battery charger is actually referred to as a charging hub. 
So I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. I hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, you can visit us at www.ctobob.com. Please leave some comments below. We love to hear from you. And um, check us out in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.